that is. Mm-mm. That's Snoop Dogg. This is for the G's and this is for the hustlers. This is for the hustlers. Now back to the G's. I know the song. I just didn't recognize the beat. Yeah. It's a cool song. It's one of my favorite songs by the Snoop Dogg. Speaking of cool songs. <laughs> we got one. What is your name? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Great Measures. <laughs> my name Great is... Great Measures. My name is Richard. That's Judson. And speaking of cool songs, <laughs> it's not quite Snoop Dogg. Not quite? Mm-mm. It is a band that has been requested quite a few times. A band called Dream Theater. No, that's not, that's not quite Snoop Dogg at all, is it? Not really, no. This album did kind of come out around the time Snoop was... Uh, the Dog Pound? This the album dog came father? out... In, <laughs> the album's by the Snoop Doggy Dog. This one came out in 92. Yeah, yeah. Right in there. Yeah. Uh, the album's called Images and Words. Mm. And the song is called Under a Glass Moon. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> um, so I did a little reading on it. The... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, from what I understand, and I could be wrong, uh, the song, the lyrically, the song is it was inspired by the lead singer sitting in his car on the side of the road in front of his then girlfriend's house under a street light, under a glass moon. Okay. Uh, and he was about to go in and propose to her. Oh. Somebody should have. Somebody should. <laughs> Don't do that. Should have said, "Hold on a minute." <laughs> he, think again. Yeah. If not. Think it through. I'm sure she's a wonderful person. I'm sure she is. And him too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm assuming he didn't take the the, uh, the terrible leap. Oh, I don't know. That's not in the song at the end. So it's I mean, just about I think that he, moment. I'm pretty sure he did. But it's just about that It's moment. just about that moment, yeah. The t- I shouldn't have said the terrible leap. The leap. The leap. Just the leap. Uh, very talented band. Uh, kind of falls into the progressive metal. I think I've heard some of Dream Theater in the past. Sure. I've known some genius musicians that I've worked with that are Dream Theater people. Yeah. I know there's a lot going on in their music. Or that, I mean, like I said, I couldn't name one thing that I've heard, but the people that I know that really dig it are yeah, crazy mu- good musicians. Right, right. Well, cool. Let's, uh, let's do it. Okay. All right. Get excited. Excited? Mm-hmm. I'm kind of like Larry David. Like, I don't, I don't really get excited. I'm like, you know, okay. I don't think Larry David gets excited about anything, does he? I, no, on one of those coffee and... Comedians and yeah, cars yeah. getting coffee. Him and Jerry were sitting there talking. He was like, so are you excited? He was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how I feel when somebody asks me, are you excited? I'm doing, I look excited. I mean, you know, let's go, let's do it. But, but... <laughs> Dream theater. Dream images theater. and... Straight lights. Images and words. Images is the album. and words. Under a glass moon. Under a glass moon. From 1992. Okay, proceed, Richard. All right. It already sounds like he's aware. That the situation that he's in in his car <laughs> might be a foreboding sense. Nothing against pe- people that are married. I hope it works out. Sure. It's just, you know. We don't have to go into it right now. I'm sure they will. Let's start it over again. One more time. Let's do it. Proceed again, Richard.
these guys normally instrumental mainly? No, not really. No? Mm -mm. I don't know why I had that. They may have some instrumental stuff, but they've got a, a, a vocalist with some pipes. He can blow. He can. note that he hit didn't sound like a voice it sounded like a like dying bag Daryl yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah he's got some pipes for sure I mean he's given a lot of imagery about the sky and water and his memories and stuff but they don't sound like he's very excited to go in the house and propose to her <laughs> from this standpoint in my opinion I mean I don't know what they all mean, all the images mean so far. I love music where the drummer and the bass player are are like he's on like the bass player plays on the bass drum stuff like that that don't 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 like they you know yeah. double bass drum and and he's doing I I just think that's the bass player and the drummer have to be like their own band inside of a band like that. Sure. But then they all do it. They they all are falling on the same notes at certain times. I'm not saying, that, you know what I mean. But but any rhythm section needs to be like best friends, you right. know, In the music, so to speak. in sync with each other. Well, not just in sync, but I mean, like know what each other. They need to know each other, right? To wherever they're going to go, because they they're a lot of times they're playing together. And in my opinion, any band that has a, a bass player and a drummer that are on like that it's just way more full and it's just better music to right me. yeah you can tell i just think those that differentiates good bands from bad bands for me so that means you're approving of the dream theater so far right the rhythm section for sure okay and the guy with the dime bag daryl vocals <laughs> if I could say. no yeah it's cool it, it's there's only certain kinds of voices that can sing over that music sure. being played. Yeah. Because like I said, I could hear that being completely instrumental and it be rad mm -hmm. without the vocal. So it's kind of, you can't just be some, you don't just have audi open auditions for things like that. You're right. Like, That's the guy that can sing, and, yeah. you know? 
Whenever you're ready, Richard. We'll do it. make that noise that did you hear that i don't know if i know which one you're talking about go back 10 seconds okay ready yeah <laughs> No, dude. Mm -hmm. That can't be the whammy bar. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. That have you seen him do it? Yeah. A lot of there's it's that quite a, Yeah. There's quite a few people that, that do that. I'm I don't know what they're doing with it, but I know that's what they're using. I mean I have assaulted a whammy <laughs> bar before. I'm serious. Like I used to try to play notes where the notes weren't actually the one I was holding on the fret. I would I would use the whammy bar and try to find the notes somewhere else. So I else think they're proper. pulling it out. But if you pull it out, it goes up. It goes... Yeah, I think that's where some of that noise is coming in. Dude, I, I've never heard that noise ever. <laughs> Seriously, like... And I've assaulted guitars. Like, if that noise can be made just by accident, I would have done it. Yeah. He only does it twice, maybe three times. Yeah. He's got... You know, that the middle section, when the keyboards come in, mm -hmm. that's some... Funky, funky, get down stuff right yeah. there. I like that they'll break into that every now and then. The guitar player is like all of a sudden playing some real blues rock and roll. That you know, like yeah. I wish they'd stay in that longer. Okay. That's my that's my 
Yeah. That's my thing. It's your comfort zone. I mean, that's, <laughs> I'll rock all day. But like when they when they drop down and the keyboards first come in, that's been my favorite part of the song so far. That okay. is that stuff was groovy. Yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to be like, that shit was fucking great, man. <laughs> but I didn't. All right. Ready? Yes. Jiminy Crickets. Good stuff, right? A lot <laughs> of stuff. Take your sweet ass time getting over here, Richard. I will. Just, you need something to drink? You want to go to the bathroom or anything? No, nope, I'm good. You sure you want to get something to eat? I'm good. I'm good. You forget anything? Mm -mm. <laughs> I was eating a Lunchable while you were <laughs> reacting to that song. Of all things. I don't know why Lunchable, lunchable popped into my head. <laughs> oh, where do we go from here? Oh, Dream Theater. Dream Theater. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, when I hear guitar playing like that, I think of Buckethead. You know who Buckethead is? Mm -hmm. We've actually had a few requests for Buckethead. Really? Mm hmm Man, that dude is phenomenal. There's an old recording of Buckethead sitting at a, at a party. I don't know if he knew the people or not, you know, but he's got that white mask on and he plays a Star Wars theme, but then he just goes through all this, plays uh, uh, Mr. Sandman, and he, he goes back and forth. Just a little lamp, just sitting on a little lamp. Anybody seen that? It's really, it's really awesome. You can find it. But, um, I mean, you know, that guy's... And sometimes those guitars, which... And I don't know a lot about the, the, the more... The guitars that you'd use to play something like that. Mm -hmm. That's not a Fender Stratocaster. Sure. I don't think. Yeah. But a lot of times they got more frets on them. The strings are a lot more sensitive to, for you to do all the tapping mm -hmm. stuff. And I think the whammy bar may react differently. You know, the, the whammy bar I've had to do with are just cheap. Mm -hmm. Fender knockoffs or a Fender and just... So I don't know how, how you make that noise. I, the jury's still out of my mind on how you actually do <laughs> it. I mean, he, he had like... He like tickled the string or something. He like he touched it a certain way. I could be wrong. Went, it may not be the string went. <laughs> he gave it chills or something. I don't know. It may not be the whammy bar, but, but you, um, there's a bunch of riffs in there that, that I could that I, I thought about a whole bunch of different guitar players. Whenever, especially leading up to his solo and then in his solo, I'm thinking of everybody from Buckethead to Trey Anastasio from Fish to Fish. To uh, uh, just simple stuff. I mean, of course, 
Eddie Van Halen, but I mean, uh, some of those, you know, the guitar riffs just kind of turn over with different people, and depending on what, however they, what they hear and their influences are, they put together their own little thing. Even John Schofield heard some, like, the way he was kind of doing some stuff, but then all that, just so many things going on. That's why I don't think I, I latched onto that, I don't want to say that type of music, but when all, so much is going on in a song, like, I sit here and think, What's the next song? Could mm -hmm. what could it possibly sound like? Sure. Yeah. That you just didn't do in that song. Right. I mean, I'm, that's being short sighted. I'm not saying they're obviously they don't have other. You know what I mean? It's just I, whenever I've written a song or, or or whatever, I don't think I don't think. Hey, in this part, we're gonna go and yeah. then go the next part. Right. It's like so that's amazing to me. Yeah. That 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 can be replicated in a unique way all the time. Yeah. No disrespect to anybody. I'm sure they're great guys. Yeah. That's, uh, the guitar player is, his name's John, and I think you pronounce his last name, Petrucci. It's P-E-T-R-U-C-C-I. Petrucci or Petrucci. Oh, I've seen his name before. Yeah, he's very... Highly revered in the guitar world. I think I've seen it like with Satriani and, and yeah, just in like that kind of some of the Satriani, Steve Vai. Vai, yeah. That's who I hear a little bit when I hear sure. that solo, especially. Sure. I mean, that guy does well, even though it's clean. A lot of times, he'll he'll put the like there were some seven chords that they'd hit, you know, mm -hmm. like I like that kind of stuff put in there. You know, sometimes Vai is a little too, a little too. Clean, I guess. Clean and mm. fast. I don't know. But I like the gri I like the get dirty sound, and they, they definitely do that. But I can't help but wonder, does the lead singer play an instrument? That's a good question. I do not know. Um, because if he doesn't, you know, so, you know, when Robert Plant was not singing and Led Zeppelin was just playing, I hope I can say that, Sure, I guess, yeah. Um, he's standing up there all sexiest man in the universe. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm just saying, dude's just standing up there kind of grooving to the music. What's that lead singer doing while they're going crazy like that? Is he just kind of watching them? Yeah. <laughs> because he's, he, if he's moving to it, then he's moving all over the place. You, you understand mm -hmm. what I mean? You know, Freddie Mercury's running around doing whatever he's doing to the music. I just would like to know what his what his movements are while because there's a long period of music where they're just and the drums are way higher in the mix to me like the drums were more prevalent than anything else to me. Mhm. Mm which is cool. I believe that's Mike Portnoy. I've heard that name too. Yeah, he's big in the drum drumming world. Um He gives a lot of credit to uh, to Rush as a big influence on him, the band Rush. I know who Rush is. Mm -hmm. Celine Dion has never sang for them. She has not, not that we know of. <laughs> no, Rush is, I'm okay with Rush. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I respect that, the, the heck fire out of him. Yeah. Is it Getty Lee's voice that you don't like? I mean, I kind of warmed up to that a little bit. I think it's sometimes the the lyrical content, I think. One time I saw them at a lot... I, I wasn't there, but I saw like on a, a show on... I don't know, it was on somebody else's television. Mm -hmm. That was what. And they had... I think... I think I'm... I mean... You know... I, my mind used to be distorted on substances a while back. Sure. Before I... Put all that down. Right. So I maybe I'm fuzzy, but I'm usually pretty good. They had what looked to be like dryers with clothes tumbling in them. Yeah. On yeah. either side of the stage. You're right, yeah. So Rush was... So that kind of made me like... What, what I'm looking at at the stage, you know, like... Appliances? I mean, you're a fire guy. You're a pyromaniac. I mean, whenever you go... See, <laughs> <laughs> That's why you like the music. Let me, hold on, of all hold, the on fire. hold on. So I'm going to address, if people have made it this far in the video, uh, Okay. we need Rush recommendations in the comments. I've heard a lot of it, though. Uh, 
We'll see. I mean, I've heard. You know the hits, I'm sure. I mean, I've heard all the Free Will and Tom I've, Sawyer I, yeah, I've heard, and Lime Light. I've, I've heard Spirit all the, of the radio. The first cycle dryer, you know, <laughs> the, the drying of, of the first cycle of clothes. I got you. Um, why did they have dryers on the stage, Richard? I don't know. Maybe. I know it happened, but I don't know the reason behind it. Maybe it had to do with the theme of the tour. Maybe we can. Let you listen to one of the songs from Appliance Tour 2002, <laughs> North America. The Maytag America. Tour. <laughs> <laughs> the Maytag Tour, pretty good. All right, so that was Dream Theater. Yeah, I, I dig it. I mean, there's a, there's a much longer conversation if, if you go, if you play a song for 20 seconds and then stop it, you could literally talk about each section. Yeah. At length, just from an interest level, from my standpoint. Of music, I, the, my favorite section though was when that keyboard comes in, and and what the groove that they're right. laying down for that yeah. that stuff. Because it, you know, when the first, keyboard first comes in, it kind of sounds like, what? Is, why are they playing mm -hmm. this here? But it really tonally worked well. And then the guitar, they were just, man, I want to curse sometimes. And I, you know, just I don't I, because I don't have another word to put in place of it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, they were just digging. Like, they are just, just gnarly stuff mm -hmm. up under it. And then, <laughs> boom, 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 off they go, you know, crazy. Dream theater. Yeah. Under a glass moon. Images, images and words, 1992. So maybe it was just him, just the, the things he was, he mentioned tears, you know, silver tears and. Liquid Shadows. And I could be wrong about that, but from what I have gathered about the song, that's... Do your research, Richard. I know, I know. Um, Such a letdown. Uh, but I mean, that could all just been going on in his head. We think of crazy things in, in normal situations, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but there were, a lot of, there were a lot of images that he was relaying with words. Maybe it just goes that far. Maybe. Maybe it didn't have anything to do with the possibly travesty of a decision that he was going <laughs> in there to make. Yeah, maybe not. I just want to leave. I just think girls should always have a way out easy. You know what I mean? If you lock them up, it's just not easy for them to get out and get away from you. Did I fix it at all? I don't think, we'll I, just think say I'm digging that. myself more up. We'll save that yeah. for another day. I think I'm digging myself when we're not a bigger hole. being recorded by a camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Anyways. What have I done? I hope you enjoyed that video. That is... Uh, Which video is that? This one? I hope you enjoyed this video. Okay. Judson's reaction to Dream Theater. Uh, let us know in the comments where we should go next with the Dream Theater ride that we're on. Um, seemed like a successful start. What do you consider non-successful? We are great measures. <laughs> My name is Richard. This is Judson. Great measures. <laughs> you like that? I hope y'all have a wonderful day.